Hey guys, so I wanted to share a little bit. Uh, I've noticed I've been playing a little bit of WoW Classic and people have been asking if I was gonna make any videos. I figured I'd make a couple. Uh, to start off, I wanted to talk a little bit about shaman tanking, the process of how you do it and why it's something that you might wanna do. Uh, the first major reason why you'd want to be a shaman tank is primarily because there are not a lot of tanks right now. Uh, the tanking classes, especially on Horde, uh, tend to be difficult to level. A lot of people don't like leveling warriors, and druids have a lot of random quests, and their gear is not very great for tanking in the beginning. While shamans, their damage mitigation is very, very low, they actually have some of the best threat out of the tanks, uh, all the way up to level 40 or 50, making them able to tank and hold aggro on mobs that are uh, with teams that are much higher level than them. In fact, I was in a game earlier, uh, in a dungeon earlier, and the everyone on my team was a good probably uh, five to six levels above me, and I was still holding aggro on all of them. So I want to share a little bit about the process of tanking as a shaman, what you need to know, what's important, and what are the things you should really be thinking about. Uh, because aggro is not really a big deal, you don't need to worry too much about... Uh, handling the pulls uh, and I'll talk about my rotations for pulls uh, the biggest things that I think you should be looking at is you should be a little over geared because you don't have damage mitigation and you need to be a little bit above uh, the starting levels for any of the dungeons for example rage fire uh, is a you could be 11 when you go in 11 12 most people recommend 13 if you're going to tank it I recommend 14 or 15 before you tank it so you don't get crit when you're going against bosses. Uh, that is really the biggest tip that I can give about playing as a shaman tank is just be a little above level whenever you start tanking any sort of dungeons. It's just so much better because then you don't need to worry about the damage mitigation, the fact that you're wearing leather and you can't go bear form for extra survivability. Uh, you're not wearing mail, so it is very, very tricky. The next thing is when you're handling pulls, uh, honestly, it's very, very easy to handle pulls. I mean, one of the easiest things to note is you can pretty much hold aggro on something indefinitely from just a single earth shock a lot of times. Uh, but I usually alternate between auto attacks when attacking multiple units, and I use earth shock just to pull back aggro on things. As long as you're using Rock Biter Weapon, which does a significant amount of threat, it's increased threat on the faster weapons that you're firing because Classic didn't really figure that out very much. Um, so at rank 3, it is 16 threat per auto attack, meaning with a weapon that attacks about once every other second, like the weapon that I currently have, uh, it will bring on about 50 to 60 threat per second, including the extra damage that I'm doing with auto attacks. And that means that someone would have to be doing about 100 DPS to be able to out-threat my auto attacks. Which at this level is just not going to happen. Um, but it's not really a big deal. Oh, and also in Classic, people have mana. So chill out in between um, different uh, pulls because there's a good chance that you're going to have to wait for your mana to come back. In this case, we're running with two Warlocks and a Shaman and a Priest. So we are just taking a second. We're going to let them get higher up on mana, and then I'll go and pull again. Classic, this is extremely important. And honestly, as a Shaman tank, you will have mana problems too. So it's best to always just take a glance at where everyone's at. This guy's mana is going up rather slow. So we're just going to take a pull. So we're going to take a few steps back here. And our goal with this pull is we want to get everything a lot closer to us. And then we are going to interrupt his cast with an Earth Shock and then pull everything closer again. One more auto attack to each of the different things just so that they don't pull any extra aggro from here. And we're going to alternate our auto attacks between these two. We're going to interrupt anything that we can using our Earth Shock. Earth Shock primarily is for threat, but if you need to interrupt something, feel free to do that, uh, especially heals or ranged attacks. If you're ever worried about the healer pulling aggro whenever you're in a pretty important situation, say, for example, I pull something like four units, what I usually recommend is dropping a Stone Claw Totem, as it's a great tool to get a good chunk of your uh, targets attacking something other than your healer. It's just enough to take off of your healer, but not quite enough to take off of anything that is uh, focusing the rest of your team. 
As far as buffs, there's a lot that you can work on, but honestly, the most important one that I focus on is just making sure that your rock biter weapon is on at all times. Uh, I do like Stone Skin Totem if there's any sketchy situations. In this case, I will be doing a line of sight pull so that the shaman gets closer, and when he casts, I'm going to interrupt his cast and then go back to attacking. In this case, they are focusing pretty heavily on this minion, and I'm not going to be able to pull back the... Um, the actual aggro yet, but I will be able to hold the aggro on these two by simply alternating my attacks. Rather easy to keep aggro like this. Um, to increase the damage mitigation, there are some potions that you can make in case you're playing alchemy. There are also a wide variety of uh, things you can pick up in the auction house. I personally like to pick up light armor kits as because the leather workers are kind of just trying to level up everything right now anyways. So again, I'm waiting till he casts. He's not casting, so I'll use our shock for threat. Um, but yeah, so they're trying to level up their leatherworking anyway, so you can get these for dirt cheap. In fact, I bought all of these at vendor cost uh, because they just, instead of vendoring them, they just put them up in the auction house, which is really nice for them. Uh, and I, I recommend doing the same thing just to be nice to people. If there are items that uh, are very similar to vendor cost, feel free to do those. They're just a very, very good uh, thing to add, especially when you don't have a lot of damage mitigation, getting that extra armor is really valuable. There are some other things that you can pick up, and I recommend just getting enough gear that you can. So, for example, if there's anything that you can pick up that might increase your survivability, definitely do that. In this case, I do like pulling things over walls and then using line of sight. It's just something that's really valuable for getting things closer to you. And they're Again, a lot of techniques for this. If you've played tanks before, you know a lot of the techniques that I'm going to be using. Nothing too crazy, um, but it's a pretty good pace. If you're ever worried about just increasing your damage a little bit, the best tool for that is usually just dropping a Searing Totem. Searing Totems are usually enough to speed up certain boss fights, as well as they do add a little bit more threat. Their threat is called Natural Threat, though, which is a one-to-one. -one. Uh, natural Threat is just anything that you do that deals damage, you get 100% of that as threat. Uh, so fire damage tends to be one to one. Sometimes it's one to 1.1. Uh, in the case of like warlocks, they do have things that do double threat. Um, but generally the only things that are doing increased threat for you as a shaman is the rock biter and the earth shock. Earth shock is a one to two threat. So if you do 60 damage, you are going to be applying uh, 120 threat, which is really, really valuable. And Lightning Bolt is just basic nature damage, which is why I use rank 1 to pull things. And then when they show up, I will then... So in this situation, you're going to see I'm putting down a Stone Claw. I'm going to taunt one with that. I'm going to auto attack to grab threat from this one. And then I'm going to attack this one. Uh, now I'm going to be able to hold threat on all three. And it'll be rather, rather easy. When Stone Claw dies, I like to switch over to Stone Skin Totem. As Stone Skin Totem will allow me to mitigate my damage by an extra 7. And it's not much, uh, but it is worth the mana cost. You can see while using a lot of these totems, I do rip through my mana really fast. So big pulls, just be cautious. But the cool part about big pulls is you tend to have to wait for mana for your team anyways. So uh, we can kind of just hang out for a little bit and not have to worry about anything there. As far as gear, the stats that you're going to be looking for are primarily stamina and agility as those are going to be reducing your, uh, it's going to be giving you dodge chance. Strength is also very valuable as it's going to be giving you block chance. As far as your talents, if you're tanking, the only real talent you're going to need is shield specialization. Some of the other ones are kind of nice, like guardian totems, but you really don't actually need that. The shield one is really going to be the most valuable for you. It's okay to do pulls whenever there's pats nearby, as long as uh, your team is prepped for them and they're ready to go. So in this case, I pull them. Make sure that your back is not being attacked or you won't be able to block attacks that are going towards your back. I always try to spin myself around just so that I can see everything that's going on. And it's relatively simple. When you get to bosses, there is really just one aspect for uh, that you, you really need to focus on, which is making sure that you have all of your buffs available ahead of time, and then gain a little bit of mana before that. In this case, we are going to simply just pull one of these trogs with a lightning, and we're going to auto attack, and then we're going to interrupt the shaman's first spell cast, which should be right there. I don't think he actually cast anything, but... Um, 
Just wanted to make sure that he was down. We will save our next Earthshock to interrupt the heal. And there we go. Heal was interrupted. We are pretty low on mana, but we can pull one or two of these really quick uh, with just some stuff. We already have all of our stuff out. We are going to be doing a line of sight pull so that the all of the mobs that we're going to cast ranged abilities won't be able to cast those ranged abilities. They instead run forward and do melee abilities. Which makes it a lot easier so there's no patrols that might end up picking up the mobs and it's just generally a really great tool to do. Uh, I, I also recommend because you get the majority of your armor from your shield, make sure that you have a shield that is up to par in terms of level. Uh, and this is kind of how I handle bosses by the way. I just start off by throwing some totems out, I then do my auto attacks, and you can do a lot of DPS through this. I will sometimes even use flame shocks as they do damage over time. It just depends on how fast I think I'm going to be able to kill the, the boss. In this case, uh, we drop the boss in a pretty good speed. 15.39 seconds is not bad, and then we're going to start heading back to the rest of the dungeon. This gives you the basic idea of how you should be handling a Shaman tank. Again, when pulls start getting a little wild, you use Stone Claw just to make sure that your healer doesn't get any aggro. You alternate your auto attacks to get aggro on everything and use Urshocks to grab aggro back from other people. It's pretty straightforward. There's not too much that you need to be concerned about. It is a... Uh, probably one of the easier tank classes once you get the hang of it. Just understand that, again, you need to be a little leveled above everyone else. I'm going to be going through the rest of this dungeon so you can just kind of see. I'll be talking through a couple of the pulls, but this gives you the general idea of how you do a tank on um, as a shaman. Uh, and, and honestly, this works all the way up uh, into some of the later dungeons. There, were, there was this guy that was known for doing this. He would even tank 10 mans. Uh, as a shaman all the way up until uh, Upper Blackrock Spire. And he said that it's definitely something that you can do really at any stage of the game. Now, he put a lot of priority on Lightning Shield. He said that Lightning Shield was the most mana-efficient way of doing damage as a tank. And while that's good, I my mana shield is actually on, or so my lightning shield is actually on a pretty low rank for my level, so it just doesn't do very much damage. And that's something that you're going to need to learn while leveling up is you're not going to be taking all of your abilities. And if you're going to be tanking, you want to prioritize things like rock biter weapon as well as your shocks over things like extra damage, especially since you only need to do enough damage to hold aggro, and that's about half as much damage as your team's doing. So as long as you can do about half as much damage as your team's doing, you're in a really good position. In this case, I'm usually second on the damage chart, and that is pretty good. Uh, I use Flamestruck on any mobs that I know we won't have an issue holding aggro on, or I use flame shocks on mobs that are immune to earth damage. For example, these elementals that I've been killing are immune to earth damage. You'll find things like this happen a lot in vanilla, and uh, it's... Uh, Definitely something that that is uh, interesting, though. So you don't actually get male armor until 40, and I don't really recommend you trying to, um, to worry about that too much. Uh, really, your tanking ability is perfectly fine. The only thing that you're going to be missing out on is survivability, and as long as you do your pulls smart, you won't have to even worry about survivability. Even if you pull a couple extra minions, it's not a big deal. Just drop a couple totems, and if you need to, if you're having mana problems, just bring a couple potions to get your mana back in those tight pulls. You can always use extra potions that you can pick up. Remember that uh, people are trying to level their, their stuff, so it should be relatively easy for you to, or relatively cheap for you to go through and pick up some extra things just to make it a little bit safer uh, in terms of survivability. As long as you're doing safe pulls one by one, it's not too bad. Even if you realize that something's about to go down, it's not too bad to even just send out an extra bolt, bring in an extra unit, which, again, try not to do it too much while you're being attacked. Do you see how he's immune? He's immune to any nature damage, so that's why I'm not using Earth Shock on these Molten Elementals. Kind of surprising that a Molten Elemental is immune to Earth but not Fire, but I'm not complaining. If they were immune to both earth and fire, then these would take forever. And as this one's about to die, I'm going to head over and pull this one. But remember not to get attacked from behind too often because you won't be able to block. 
Now just watch everyone's mana. Remember this is vanilla, and there are mana issues in this uh, expansion, and not expansion, in this original game anyways. So you need to make sure not to do anything. Elixir of Minor Agility. He needed it. I'm actually tempted to need this too. Um, I am an alchemist. It, do I recommend a certain profession for... Um, or shamans, not really. You can play whatever you want to, honestly. Shamans are pretty varied. You can go with leather working and then go into making mail and later levels. You can go with uh, weapons. Um, there's there's a lot of things. But nothing's really necessary there. I do personally like alchemy in vanilla purely because of the transmutations as transmutations because I don't play that much. Transmutations are going to give me the opportunity to use a um, a cooldown ever so often to just gain extra money. In this case, you can see I'm dropping down a Stone Claw Totem. It's going to taunt for a second for me, and then I'm going to grab aggro off of everything else. Once everything's there, I'm going to drop down a Stone Skin so that I take reduced damage. And that is essentially it. To be honest, because my healer's handling this really well, I may not actually cast Stone Skins anymore because it is burning my mana really fast. And our healer's mana tends to be pretty decent. So I'm probably just going to let her handle that. And then I'm going to focus primarily on, uh, on just keeping aggro. And if you have a healer that can handle your damage and you don't need to worry about damage mitigation, Shamans are honestly probably the best tank until 60. Just because they do a lot of damage in a wide variety of gear sets. In this case, I don't actually need to make this pull here. I'm only making this pull because uh, the extra experience. So I just did 200 damage um, of of threat to that. I'm just I could completely ignore this enforcer now and focus primarily on this one. If you ever see a crit on your earth shock, you're pretty much good to go for that. Uh, increasing your crits for spells is not a bad idea. Fiery spell damage. I don't do that much fiery spell damage, and I think that's cloth anyway. Uh, we'll wait till we can get some mana on those uh, those warlocks and shamans over there. It's mainly because it's like we regen mana faster when we're not casting spells, and if I pull things, it's going to take longer to kill them anyway, so I would rather do that. Uh, when you get into these crazy pulls like this, especially in Ragefire Chasm, I like to pull things really far back. That way, I won't accidentally pull anything. And uh, and if you're ever doing this, you can prep by using your abilities ahead of time and then regening a little bit of mana. So you can see right here, I'm using three of my different things. I'll start regening. And then I can use my Lightning Bolt. And then I'm going to pull them all the way back over here. There's not a lot of line of sight that you can do. So you will be using Urshock to interrupt a cast from the Warlock right here. And once the Warlock's cast is interrupted, now everything is in this area. I'm going to let the Voidwalker just kind of go into my team. I'm not going to focus too heavily on uh, tanking that. If I do tank it, awesome. If I don't tank it, no big deal. And there we go. I can interrupt this cast if I want to, but it's not a real big deal. If you're ever playing a Shaman and you're not tanking, make sure to have a rank 1 Urshock available uh, so you can interrupt without applying a lot of threat. And again, I'm pulling way back to make sure that my team is good. This time I don't have anything that I need to interrupt, so I'm simply going to just Urshock for threat and then auto attack for threat here. Some potions that can help with your survivability. Uh, minor Fortitude increases your health, as well as there are Minor Defense Potions and Lion Strength. Lion Strength will increase your block values, which is kind of nice. Once again, we're going to be approaching a boss here, and we are going to pull him a little bit away, just because I am worried. We want to make sure that we buff before we pull the boss, but in this case, I'm not too worried about it. And uh, there we go. So we're going to be firing off one Earth Shock immediately to hold aggro the whole time and then we're going to be firing off a flame shock for the dps aspect of this 
followed by alternating with another Earth Shock to keep up on the threat, and also because we're waiting for the Flame Shock to get all of its value off. Right there, we not only were able to hold aggro the entire time, but we also doubled our team's DPS, which is something very valuable. Just going to speed up runs. Again, like I said, if you don't have issues with the damage you're taking, Shamans are extremely good for the early level dungeons just because of how much damage they can actually do. Right here, we are just going to simply hang out for a little bit, and then we are going to pull these in. I might actually pull from the other side. Doesn't really matter, honestly. Uh, yeah, we're going to walk here. But I want to make sure that we have mana available, and we are sitting with full mana. So once again, in this case, I'm going to be using a Stone Claw Totem, and I'm going to be using a Lightning Shield. We're going to pull this, and we're going to auto-attack this, and we're going to stay in the area where we might get hit by a patrol, but not in the area where we're going to pull these. Getting hit by stuns is not a big deal, uh, because a lot of your threat is, once it's actually applied, you don't really need to worry about it anymore. Um, right on. Whenever you have fights like this where there's ranged and there's multiple ranged units, it's usually best to simply just walk right into it and drop down a Stone Claw Totem, interrupt with your Earth Shock, and then get on there for your team, trying to auto attack whatever you can. In this case, two auto attacks over here. I'm going to leave the Void Walker for my team, and we'll go with something after that. If you really want to pull aggro on all the little guys, then feel free to use a combination of a Fire Nova Totem and a Stone Claw Totem. Stone Claw will pull everything close, Fire Nova will then do a good chunk of fire damage to everything, and it's usually enough to make sure that things don't go to your healer for the rest of the fight, but there are better ways to handle it. I do tell my team whenever I'm pulling back, just so that they don't run in and get caught with something really dumb, and like I said before, I'm going to be firing off a rank 1 lightning bolt, then I'm going to be moving back, and after I move back, I'm going to be using my shock to interrupt the cast of this warlock. Once the cast is, is interrupted, I'm going to go back to the cultist, pull back aggro from my team, and I'm going to leave the Voidwalker. We do have a an enforcer here, which means that I'm going to probably interrupt with this. Ah, uh, this is going to be an interesting fight. We're going to have another enforcer, and we're going to need to pop any cooldowns that we might have. We do have stone skin out there, so this is going to be a little tricky. I think we should be okay, though. I have aggro on everything, and so we are good. I will probably just throw on... I don't need a, need a strength right now. I'll probably use it for a later dungeon. And I might drink some milk. Not a bad item for me to pick up right now. Sells for 10 silver, or I could try to throw it in the, uh, in the thing. Hellstone? Oh, I forgot I had a Hellstone, my bad. Alright, so I am good to go, and I will be throwing on another Lightning Shield, just prepping for this next pull. We will be pulling this individual right here. Shouldn't be too difficult. And by that next one, we shouldn't need to actually do these long pulls anymore. And there we go. This next set, there are four units here, and I'm just going to walk myself right in here, drop down a Stone Call, a Fire Nova, and we are going to interrupt this and then just chill out. So the Stone Claw will grab aggro for a little while, and then the Fire Nova will give me the leftover aggro, which is really nice. When all of those are used up, I like to just simply drop down a Stone Claw and, or sorry, a uh, Stone Skin, and we're good to go. You can see that's how you can handle some really awkward pulls if there's a lot of little units and you just don't have the Earthshock cooldowns to keep aggro on everything or the auto attack cooldowns. Simply just combo those together. In later levels, you're going to be using Magma Totem as well as when you're pulling, you're going to be using Chain uh, Lightning. So those are going to be how you're going to handle the future pulls. But for now, it's pretty straightforward that we kind of just walk in and uh, drop down both of these totems. In a situation like this, I shouldn't need to do anything unusual, just like I've been doing. I'm going to pull this one with this, and I'm going to interrupt the cast, and then I have aggro on both of these. I will use a Stone Claw in this case to grab the Void Walker, just so that it doesn't go on my healer. Because, again, I mean, while I have been letting it go to the healer every time, remember that 
things that attack your healer will interrupt what your healer's actually doing. So uh, that means that you do get less heals. In this case, we can pull each of these, uh, I believe, two at a time. So I don't need to worry too much about waiting for my team to get mana back because I should be able to do smaller pulls. And there we go. Urshock 4 threat on 1. I didn't get my auto attack there because I dodged. And now I got my auto attack. If you ever get in a situation where one's on one side of you and one's on the other, just take a couple steps back so they're not attacking your back. And there we go. Our healer still has mana and we're still pulling at 2 per. So we are going to just simply fire off a lightning bolt here and walk again behind this area. This one shouldn't need to actually be line of sighted because it doesn't cast spells. But it's just nice to know where they're going to end up. Again, just making sure that my hammer has a rock biter on it at all times. Once again, just heading behind a wall. Going to hit with an earth shock. And I will need to auto-attack the other cultists before the heals come out. And there we go. Buffs also do apply a little bit of threat. Unfortunately, totems do not. So as much as you can drop down totems to give buffs, it's not going to be increasing your threat. However, if you are doing um, a warrior, you can shout to increase it. Better than mine. 39 armor, 41 armor. I'll just greet it. That's in a situation like this, again, I like to set up ahead of time, make sure that I've got my stone skin, make sure that I've got my rock biter, make sure that I've got my lightning shield, and then I will end up applying a searing totem as I approach a little bit closer. We're going to just chill out, wait for everyone to get uh, ready. We're going to wait for all of our mana to be available, and then we're going to head in and fight this last boss. We're just waiting on mana at the moment. And as a tank, you definitely should be waiting for mana because you never know when a pull might go a little bit crazier than you expected. If we end up pulling this and then accidentally pull this, then it's going to be a little awkward, which is why I really am focusing heavily on making sure that our pulls are going smooth. And in this case, I just got a shield. That's my healer's indicator of, hey, we're ready to go. I'm going to auto attack once, get an earth shock, and then we're going to go back and auto attack this third minion, uh, third unit anyways. And now we should have aggro on everything. Just going to continue earth shocking. We can let him have the aggro of that for just a second. We've got aggro on that for good. So we will end up just attacking the invoker now. And we do have that extra damage from our Searing Totem and his Searing Totem as well. So once again, you see our damage is very high right now. And that is essentially the most part of Ragefire Chasm. There is also a trick here where you can hop up on this wall. And we're going to wait for our healers to get ready. Um, I sometimes give people a path of totem so they know which way we are going. I have some loot here. Hold on. Um, and we'll be able to skip some of the mobs as we go for the last boss, which uh, this was technically the last boss, but there is still a boss for the quests. So uh, I will be making sure that I'm all buffed up still, and I'm going to head right in there, pulling him with an earth shock and attacking here. I'm going to step back just in case if the healer did not walk up with me, I want to make sure that everything's in line of sight. Pretty straightforward. Nothing too unusual. Yeah, I actually had a, a day where there were so few tanks that they were actually... There was a couple groups paying... They had a bidding war. Uh, there was one person who paid me 22 silver just to tank a dungeon for him. So this is why I really wanted to show people how to tank as a as a shaman because if you're playing on horde uh there are a lot of shamans and not a lot of people have the confidence to tank despite the fact that they're actually really fun tanks to play and they're pretty effective this fight could get a little weird we'll see what ends up pulling and we do have a lot of interesting things that are pulling right now uh, i do need to interrupt this and that gives me the threat i need for the rest of this uh, i'm not gonna be able to grab threat back on that one i will grab threat on the void walker and we should be good after this. If you're ever playing with two shamans in your group, then it's best to recommend who uses what totems, so because the totems don't stack. 
Um, because the tank needs to sometimes use Stone Claw Totem, I usually recommend that you just have the other Shaman use Stone Skin the entire time and then kind of go from there. 71 armor. Uh, that's not bad. I'll greet it. Not too worried about needing anything at the moment. Everything's really side grades at the moment. I'm going to drink here. And uh, I do recommend having at least three or four available for RFC in terms of drinking. Because if the fights are going a little weird, sometimes you have to use a lot of mana to keep everything going smooth. And that's why it's nice. If you have to use a lot of mana on a fight and your team didn't use a lot of mana, it's definitely nice to have that ability. Uh, we again are going to drop down a Stone Claw because it's an awkward fight. Interrupt the Warlock, auto attack the Cultist, auto attack the Void Walker. Oh, we parried one more auto attack. And now we auto attack the Cultist. And now we Urshock the Warlock to interrupt his cast again, holding aggro. We did lose aggro on the Cultist, but we are going to keep aggro on this Warlock. If I wanted to really hold aggro more, I would upgrade my. Uh, my lightning shield, but I'm not too worried about that. I could have also just ignored the Void Walker like I usually do, just to keep aggro on the actual elites. And we are almost done with Rage Fire Chasm. Again, simply just using Urshock for the threat, not for the interrupts. Pay attention to what is being, uh, what you're pulling, so you know what you need to use for interrupts and what you need to use for threat. I also recommend that you use your auto attacks on melee units, units whenever you're using Urshock for ranged units, because then your Urshock will hold your aggro for the ranged units. Right here, each of these can pull individually, but uh, we will probably be pulling two at a time after this one is dead. We'll wait for just a second. So once again, uh, we are almost done with this. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching for the entire duration of this video. And uh, if let me know what you guys think. Do you guys like the Shaman Tank? Would you like me to do more dungeons showing you how to do Shaman Tank? Uh, maybe different level ranges so you know at what points it might get more tricky or how you want to handle it. Um, do you want to know any other sort of WoW content? I was going to do a weekly money guide based off of the fluctuations in the auction house, and I may still end up going with that. Um, but for now, I'm just messing around with WoW Classic to see kind of how I like it. I personally always like WoW Classic, but I'm excited for it. Um, but yeah, I am playing a Tauren Shaman. I am on the uh, Realm Grobulus. It is a full realm, but at the same time, its cues are not as bad as some of the streamers are. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Overall, just to give you guys a quick rundown of what I recommend, uh, pull safely, make sure that you're doing all the tricks to pulling, make sure you're a little over leveled, and make sure that your gear is pretty solid for the amount, because damage mitigation is going to be your biggest issue. As far as threat generated, make sure that you are leveling up your Rock Biter and your Earth Shocks as early as possible, as well as if you're worried about damage mitigation, go with Stone Skin. Whenever I try to play a tank on the way out of the dungeon, I do like just going with my team so that they don't need to worry about the path on how to get out safely. So I show them the path as I'm leaving these dungeons. I'm going to be doing that, but I will be ending off this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any extra tips for shaman tanking, feel free to throw in the comments down below. Uh, if you ever want to look up, there is a guy named the Totem Tank. He was very popular in vanilla for tanking on a shaman. Um, I did it a little bit. Uh, I think the biggest dungeon that I probably tanked on my shaman is probably Mara, um, maybe Dire Maul. I can't remember, uh, but it really wasn't ever that big of a challenge as long as you just had a decent amount of gear and you were a little bit ahead. Um, but yeah, I just recommend shield specialization. And then after that, Feel free to do whatever you want to. It's also pretty good to level in this build because you can pull multiple mobs at once and kill them both with flame shocks and searing totems over time. So it's not a bad build to level up with either. Thank you guys so much for watching and feel free to check out my other videos.